All right. I am super honored and excited to have Sea Lion, Brian Martin here on the Move Happy Movement podcast. Thanks so much for being on the show today. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So I always love to share with my audience, you know, how I connect with people. And I mean, I was scrolling on my TikTok and I saw your awesome video where you were dancing <laughs> with a Z line and it was just so cute. But so many people saw it right before me. And I was like, holy crap, you have like a million viewers on this one post. I have to, I have to get to know you a little bit more. And so, yeah, it just kind of started from there. So, um, for those that, you know, might not know your background, why don't you talk a little bit about how that came about and tell us a little more about you? Yeah, uh, well, my I work with marine mammals. I'm a director uh, at an aquarium, mm -hmm. and my favorite animals are sea lions, so my nickname is Sea Lion Brian. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I started off, I grew up in Massachusetts, and I, got, I just always knew I wanted to work with animals, so mm -hmm. I got a degree in marine biology and a minor in psychology and chemistry. I started volunteering at the aquarium, the New England Aquarium in Boston. Mm -hmm. uh, got hired there after college, worked there for about six years. And then I went out to San Diego and I trained sea lions and dolphins for the Navy for about six years. Uh, then, then I was too far from home. I missed my family. I wanted to be a little closer. Mm -hmm. So I moved, I moved to Atlanta and I worked at the Georgia Aquarium for about five years with their beluga whales, their oh. sea otters, uh, a little bit with their penguins. Um, and then uh, I ended up knowing a guy that worked at the aquarium down here, Gulf Area Marine Adventure Park. They had wanted somebody with a lot of sea lion experience to be in the supervisor role. So I, I came down here to get into management. Um, mm -hmm. And then from there, just progressed to one of the directors of, um, of animal care. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's, it's been a very fun career. <laughs> I love that. So let's walk a little bit back in time, if you don't mind. Sure. What was that first moment for you where you knew, hey, I want to work with animals for my profession? Was there a certain moment, certain mm -hmm. age? Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've always been a kid that wants to be in the water. My dad would, he had me scuba diving in my pool in the backyard. I love um, that. <laughs> but I ended up, I ended up going with family to the New England Aquarium. And we were walking around, I was just loving everything. And we went to their sea lion and dolphin show, sat down, mm -hmm. I had no idea what was coming. And then that was it. I could not, could not believe that people could build a relationship with animals like that. Yeah. Where I was like, I was like, how are they talking to each other? Like, this is amazing. Yeah. Uh, and, and that was it. That was it. And my mm. whole family supported, supported my decision and backed me up. And they're like, you want to be whatever you want to be? Well, we're there for you. So that is it was so amazing. neat. That is so neat. That's why I always encourage people like go out and try new things. Take your kids. If you got family, take them out to, to explore because you never know, like one moment in time can completely change the trajectory of your life plan. So that's so neat. Awesome. So one of the things you kind of sparked a little memory in me too. Um, so one of the pillars of move happy is all about, you know, keeping a positive mindset and, I mean, most of your content, if not all of it is all super positive and happy, you know, who doesn't love animals, right? What, what are some, some tips and strategies for those that might be interested in getting into the field that you're working in? Um, Cause there might be some, some things behind the scenes that are challenging to overcome. Um, so what are some things you like to share as far as mindset? Um, I, I want to say like, first off, when I was, when I was younger, some people told me that I would never get into the field because it's, oh, it's way too competitive. Uh, oh, you'll make no money. I mean, it's not like, you know, penguins and dolphins don't pay millions, but you're in it for the love of the animals yeah. and being able to educate. So, you know, if you, you work hard, you're, you'll be all right. Um, but I had some people tell me that I didn't look the part. I had people tell me that I wasn't, I wasn't tall enough. I wasn't tanned enough. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't thin enough. And I just, I wanted to prove them wrong. I was like, yeah. this is what I want to do. Like, I'm, I'm going to go do it. So I think having the mindset, no matter what anybody says to you, if that's your dream, if that's what your goal is, it, and you're just putting positivity out there, then just keep going. Right. Yes. Um, I think a lot of people get stuck in this world of, 
I control my life, but, and yeah. then they turn around and they say, everything happens for a reason. You can't believe both. You have yeah. to just go with, with one. So if you don't quite get what you want right away, it's because there's going to be something better coming and you're not going to know it till it shows up. Yeah. So just enjoy the ride. Uh, I think people do believe that my job is very glamorous a hundred percent of the time. <laughs> and <laughs> Probably there, not. Is an, there is an awful <laughs> lot of cleaning. Uh, anybody <laughs> out there that has, has kids know that if you feed them, they will go to the bathroom and you'll have right. to clean up. Um, you know, there's, you know, there's stressors, you know, if, if an animal's having a baby, it, you, you know, you want to make sure that's going well. Um, animals, can get colds and all sorts of other things. So then you got to take care of them. Um, mm -hmm. Animals get older and you may have worked with them for years and years and years, and they end up passing away from unnatural causes. Um, that is something that people often don't think of when they get into the industry. But again, you know that you have poured into these animals and given them everything, your weekends, your holidays, you might be there taking care of them. Um, but they really do become part of your family. You have to be mindful not to put your emotions and feelings into how they think, yeah. um, but you still absolutely love them. And to know that you cared for them throughout that, watch them grow up and stuff, uh, really does out, outweigh all of the bucket scrubbing. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. It's good to focus definitely on the positive when we can, for sure. That's awesome. And you kind of reminded me too, just like, you know, a few of those responsibilities, you might need some teamwork, whatnot, getting things done and whatnot. Um, the second pillar of Move Happy is about, you know, a strong community and that can really impact our mental health. Um, so what is it about the industry or maybe outside of work that you've learned as far as like connecting with others, whether it's other animals or other humans um, that has helped you to stay positive? Um, that's, you know, that's a, that could, that could be a deep question. Actually. <laughs> um, we could do I the mean, synopsis. For, <laughs> I mean, I think on a, for somebody who goes through life and, and has, you know, like just, you get your job, you find, you know, you get your, your degree, you find your job, you move through life, you find your, you know, your partner, you have yeah. your family that like some days you'll have your ups and downs where you may not be, you know, that like that thrilled with life. That's you hate traffic. Like we get it, but, yeah. um, <laughs> but um, yeah, and that's normal. And I think for me, something that I try to do is make all aspects of life normal and if you're if your viewers probably don't know but um about three and a half years ago my partner who I was with for four years um he died about 10 months after my father did mm -hmm. and so I had my whole life collapse like yeah. my entire life just fell apart and um where do you go from there because yeah. he was turning 42 um wow. I mean yeah. rap it was, it was acute uh, liver failure. It was unexpected. He was on medication. There were things that just were not done right. And mm -hmm. all of a sudden, there I was living in an area that we had just moved to. We didn't have a lot of friends. My family doesn't, they don't oh, wow. live here. Um, you know, and my dad had passed and then Clayton had passed away. So I went south fast. Yeah. And I like to tell people about it. It doesn't, it doesn't bother me. I, I write a blog, a widowed blog every week. I represent the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I share the fact that everything I go through is normal. And I think that's the connectivity part. I think that's, I think that's the teamwork part and it fits in with what you do, because if you have somebody who's showing you that it's normal, yeah. then everyone else feels more comfortable. When everyone else feels more comfortable, you can have bigger conversations. When you have bigger yeah. conversations, you have better understanding. Yeah. And whether that has to do with loss and grief, if it has to do with being at work and trying to figure out what is the best plan to train a sea lion something with a team, if you all have better understanding, you all give each other the benefit of the doubt and you all realize, you know, in so many ways we're more similar then we, yeah. then our differences, mm -hmm. you come together and you get things done, be it having, you know, having that animal do a flip in a show, mm -hmm. um, 
or, you know, being able to manage your roughest day because you know that the next day you're going to be able to show up for yourself Mm -hmm. because you've seen other people do it and it's possible. It's, it's giving people that hope that there's possibility, no matter what it is that they're doing. Yeah. Wow. Such a powerful statement. And that's a lot, what a lot of leaders say as well is finding the good, finding the commonalities in others really is a great way to connect. So way to, way to go in such a challenging, I mean, I wouldn't, I couldn't imagine going through that and to still, you know, be that light and love uh, to spread positivity through that. I think you're being a great role model to all people um, that might have gone through something similar. Um, wow. I'm like, I'm super touched right now that you felt, you know, vulnerable enough to share that. And definitely everybody needs to read your blog, especially those that are widows and widowers, um, tough stuff, but we keep moving forward and I love it. Absolutely. I love, I love that you keep moving on, moving forward. So the third pillar of move happy, of course, is movement related. And of course, that first intro where I saw your first video was dancing. So I'm guessing that that's your favorite thing to do to move your body, but maybe not. I don't know. Is that your favorite? <laughs> dancing? That is my, time? that is my favorite thing to do. I am the I am the first one on the dance floor. I love that. I'm right behind you. I want the happy couple to have their dance and get out of my way. (laughs) Get out of my way. I love that. Get out of my way. And I always, I always have, that's always, music has always been, it's just fun. It's, you know, and you're, you're doing your thing and there was, you just, you get to feel, feel the music however you want and express yourself and have a good time. And it was something else that my family just really supported. Like I, They've told me time and time again, we would be at some like outdoor public event, like a a carnival affair, like whatever we were on and a song would come on and I would just yell, hey, everyone, let's all dance. And I would just start, there's a five-year-old like grabbing the, grabbing an 80-year-old woman's hand and dancing with her and like just pure joy, pure joy. Um, And it's, it's funny because it ties in a lot to dealing with the difficulties and bringing yourself into more of a positive mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, Because I wasn't on TikTok until somebody sent me a video right when we were going into the pandemic because she said, Brian, you love dancing and you're gonna be stuck in your house. Yeah. And you, I I hadn't really gotten through, that was going into year two after Clayton passing away. So things Mm -hmm. were very real. And I was very, I couldn't go home for the holidays. She's like, just, if nothing else, watch this. And that's how I jumped on wow. there and started to, to bring myself wow. out of it. Huge growth, huge growth in a short amount of time for uh, as far as like how many people have been impacted. And I imagine even more are going to be possibly impacted by you sharing and just being real and fun. You know, positivity is such a contagious good thing to spread. So keep, keep going with that for sure. I love that. That's, that's so neat. Um, okay. So like, tell us a little bit about, I know you mentioned where you work and whatnot. Tell us like, what are you super excited about, whether it's work related or maybe something personal that you're passionate about that we can support you with? Um, well, I mean, anything that helps the environment is like, that's, (laughs) that's just a huge thing. And yeah, yeah, everyone has their opinions um, about, you know, animals that are in zoos and aquariums. And I think what I really would love is for people to just support, support places that are, you know, so many people think that they're just making so much money um, because people are coming in to watch an animal show. And that's not the case. It just takes so much effort. It takes so much manpower and food the electric bill, the water bill, and those things get forgotten. And I think, you know, whether people necessarily agree or not, um, it's giving, it's giving each other compassion Mm -hmm. that we're trying our best to do what we think is right to better the lives of animals. Um, whether we exactly agree on that, you know, like I've seen parents who have parenting techniques that I don't agree with, Mm -hmm. but for them, that's the direction they head. And, you know, I've seen other parents do something that's totally different. And to me, it's very similar because you're, you're taking care of, you're taking care of animals that need you. Um, so I, I think if, if people would support their local zoo, 
aquarium rescue shelter. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's a huge thing, doing better for the environment, using products that are better for the environment. Um, and, you know, I, I think for me, I love that. Um, sharing my story, sharing my blog with people out there, following yeah. me on social media so that I can reach more people. Um, that's a great way to help me because if, yeah. if I can get out there and I and somebody else, if someone else sees my widowed blog and they decide that they, I, I, I've actually had people say this. Um, I've, I've had people come through in messages and this it's heavy, um, but it, it just shows how important it is for us to share and be there for each other. I have had people reach out to me after reading my blog and tell me that I gave them a perspective that had them decide that they were willing to try one more day before making a decision they couldn't unmake. Wow. And so if people share wow. my stuff, then I, me just being me might help somebody make that decision and yeah. they get one more day to yeah. keep going. Yeah. Goosebumps. So. You're, you're literally changing lives. Keep going. How can people read your blog? Um, if they want, they can go directly to Soaring Spirits International. That is a nonprofit that is specifically designed to help widowed people. Okay. Um, and being widowed comes in all forms. Uh, you can be a man, you can be a woman, you yeah. can, you know, not identify. You can, you can be gay, you can be straight. Yeah. You can be married or, or not married, um, yeah. being with somebody for a long time, that's your person. So, yeah. so that resource is there and there's tons of resources for people, um, at, at that spot. Um, I do post my blog, um, on my Instagram, which is sea lion, Brian, it's Brian with a Y it's on Facebook. Um, so people, people can follow me. I can't add more once you hit like 5,000 Facebooks, like you don't need any more friends. I'm like, right. I'm so yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there. And then occasionally I share some videos on TikTok. Um, eventually I think I want to do video blogs where I read each one of my entries and I yeah. put it, um, I think I can get them under three minutes, which means I could put them onto TikTok. Um, yeah. but I really want to start doing that and have a series at least of, of IGTVs. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the best place, the best place to find my blog and, and see, it's not just the blog, it's my life because yeah. so many people see just the perfect. Um, yeah. and I try to be in the moment, what's happening. How's my day? What's going on? Um, yeah. I mean, I lost I lost my dad. I lost my partner. It's yeah. been three and a half years. I work with amazing animals. I love to dance. I have a new boyfriend. So it's been, hey. you know, people can see the journey and see that there are ups and downs and yeah. that it's real life. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Everybody needs to follow you everywhere for sure. I think you should do a YouTube long version too if you're like open to it, like have like a short to like slide it into, Hey, follow me up or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> when just, you have time, I, of course you might hire it out. <laughs> if I can just automate it. <laughs> right. Exactly. But, so if, if I, if I can get them all down to three minutes, then I can get it on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and yeah. over to you and over yeah. on YouTube. And so in one video, boom, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there's gotta be an app that just like sends it out everywhere. Right? Here. <laughs> I love that. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. I always love to close out the show with just a, a random, you know, question to help us connect on an even more personal level, though you've shared a lot already. <laughs> so just with the theme of dance and, and that being one of your favorite go-tos um, for a long, long time, what is it, what's your go-to like hit song to dance to as of late? Oh, as a or late. artist song song or artist um you know i i can never go wrong with some good justin timberlake dancing yes. <laughs> um but if i am going to say um if i'm going to say it would be there's a song come rain come shine which is a remake but it's a remake by um jen cunetta 
and she's she's a sweetheart i've actually touched base with her um on oh. instagram and um it's just it's pure joy. Like I hear it and I'm instantly just in a happy, happy mood. Um, so if nobody's ever heard that version yeah. of it, like I just go and download it because it's just, if I need something, I'm like, Ooh, I feel a little, uh, I will put yes. that song on and, and listening that. by the time the song's over, I'm dancing awesome. every time. Every time. I'm going to check her out for sure. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Awesome. Well, this has been so fun. Thank you again for your time. This is, this has been great. Really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This is, this is how we all get the word out. That's right. (laughs) Yeah.